Hello and welcome to uh, the Odyssey, Book 18. Uh, we begin Book 18 with the introduction of a new character, the Beggar Arniles. Uh, and uh, he comes continuing the belligerence that we saw with the uh, other uh, herdsmen, the ones who are not Arnaios. Arnaios is the only virtuous one, uh, the only pious one, the only loyal one. Uh, well, we'll find another loyal one uh, uh, a little bit later. Uh, but so far, he's the only one who has shown his loyalty to uh, uh, Odysseus. But Arnaios comes in full of himself and uh, and, and tries to um, uh, push Odysseus aside. Leave the doorway, old man, lest you soon be dragged off by the foot. So he begins antagonistically. That's why the suitors call him uh, by a nickname, by a, uh, an epithet, uh, Eros. Instead of Arnaios, they call him Eros, the angry one. Odysseus, instead of responding in kind, and of course he could, Odysseus is very tough, um, uh, and so he knows he could take this guy easily. But he doesn't respond in that way. He says, my fine friend, line 15, I do not do or speak any wrong to you, nor do I begrudge anyone's giving, even if much is taken. You know, even if you do take a lot, uh, so what? The threshold can contain us both. There is no need to begrudge what others have. But that doesn't mollify uh, Arnaios, and, uh, and so uh, the ringleader of these uh, ne'er-do-wells, the, uh, the suitors, uh, Antinous, instead of doing what a righteous man should do, uh, to be horrified at the prospect of, uh, of two uh, men fighting one another for food, instead he urges it on and he says, uh, um, you two fight and whoever wins gets all of the, uh, uh, the alms, all of the food. So forced into this uh, confrontation, then Odysseus uh, prepares for the fight by uh, taking off his chiton, his garment, and they see his physique for the first time. Okay. Now, um, we can leave it at that realistic level, that uh, uh, materialistic level, that uh, the explanation of, well, they didn't see his great physique before because it was covered by this dirty beggar's clothes and it made him look uh, like a wimp. Um, but... There's a mythological element given to us by Homer in line 70. He says, Then Athena stood near and filled out the limbs of the shepherd of the people, and all the suitors were exceedingly amazed, okay, and a little bit worried. Uh, so Odysseus drops Arnaeus with one blow. Um, line 95, uh, we're told, On the right shoulder, Eros hit him, but the other, that is Odysseus, struck his neck under the ear and crushed the bone inside. So he drops him with one blow. Uh, and so, but the suitors, instead of being intimidated, they, they aren't wily enough to real, uh, they aren't wise enough to realize uh, what's just happened. And so they simply toast the victory of, uh, of Odysseus. And uh, one of the suitors, unnamed, uh, says something that is a, a kind of a, a creepy uh, dramatic irony because he doesn't know that uh, uh, who this is before him. And so he says, Stranger, may Zeus and the other immortal gods grant what you wish and is most dear to your heart. Okay. Well, what would be, at this point, most dear to Odysseus's heart? Uh, well, that would be to kill all the suitors. So, uh, unwittingly, uh, this uh, unnamed suitor is calling on the gods to, uh, in, in fact, affect their own destruction. In the meantime, Penelope is sleeping, and the same thing that Athena has just done for Odysseus, uh, she will do now for um, for Penelope, and that is to fill out her form. Okay, sounds like the IRS, right? Because all you ever do there is fill out forms. Uh, but uh, uh, she has just filled out the limbs of um, Odysseus to make him a specimen of masculine beauty, and so... Uh, she now does that for Penelope, making her a specimen of feminine beauty. So again, we can look at this on the naturalistic level and say, well, um, uh, of course, um, uh, you know, sometimes somebody looks their age, but then sometimes they're radiant and they, and, and they really look, uh, you can see um, uh, the younger person. In fact, this is, this is the reality of love, okay? Right? And, and uh, of course, outsiders say, um, uh, love is blind, okay, uh, but but you could, uh, if you are within the bubble of love, you can say uh, uh, that it's just the opposite, that in fact love gives you uh, sight. Uh, everyone else is blind. Um, 
because it's a, a, a miracle that uh, uh, you know the old couples, the uh, the old uh, retiree geezers. Uh, um, uh, the husband looks at the wife, the wife looks at the husband, and um, the rest of the world sees the wrinkled forms, of the, the, the wrecks of bodies that are, uh, uh, that are left after 50 years of marriage. Um, but the couple, they see that. You know, that, that doesn't mean that they are so bedazzled, because, you know... Uh, at that stage of the marriage, it's not the same kind of bedazzlement that uh, uh, that is at the beginning. At least that's what the books say. Um, but uh, every once in a while, you catch a glimpse. Yes, that's the man I married. That's the woman I married. Uh, uh, because it is, because there's a continuity. Within that change, there is a continuity. Just like if you sped up the process with the computer graphics the way they do the, uh, the computerized aging uh, photos. It is the same person. So, so in fact, you can see uh, the form. So that's, that's the magic as it appears in everyday life. Okay? But uh, Homer um, mythologizes it by having uh, um, Athena direct it. And so what happens, and, and this isn't just in the mind of, uh, of Odysseus, though, when Penelope wakes up and, uh, uh, and, and comes down into the palace, all the men are amazed. You know, they, they've been after her this whole time, right? Because whoever marries her gets the kingdom. But now they want her for herself, for uh, her beauty. Uh, she comes down and... Uh, the men's knees were loosed, we are told, line 215 uh, or so, 213. The men's knees were loosened on the spot, and their hearts were charmed with desire. And they all voiced the prayer of lying beside her in bread, in bed. Uh, not in bread, but maybe. Uh, um, uh, she, um, Penelope in turn, then, um, uh, turns to her son and says, It's shameful that we allow this stranger to be treated this way. Uh, and uh, so we need to, so so in fact she officially as queen then uh, does just as, and notice how we've gone through uh, channels here, uh, just like in the military, right? Uh, the swine herd extends the uh, uh, non-official uh, hospitality, the Xenia, to um, Odysseus. Telemachus makes it official as the prince. Now the queen herself um, uh, makes it official as well. And uh, she recalls, she, she starts talking about uh, Odysseus's farewell, and she remembers something that uh, has never been told uh, uh, so far in this narrative, and that is, when Odysseus left, he said that I would be free to remarry when my son grows a beard. And now uh, Telemachus is, is sporting the first... Uh, uh, sprouts of uh, of a man's beard, and uh, and so technically, um, uh, already actually she's legally allowed to marry because her husband has been uh, declared legally dead. Um, but uh, now she's and some some readers like Anne Amory we, we will take a look at that uh, article, and it's possible to read this as uh, Penelope. Already understanding who this, the the uh, um, or e or at least suspecting we don't uh, again the uh, the conviction uh, doesn't need to be all one or the other okay uh, she may have this suspicion and she's testing it and so uh, for the first time she's talking about well maybe um, maybe I will um, maybe it's time for me to marry because my husband said um, as soon as my son has a beard. So the suitors now start doing what they've been doing all along, plying her with gifts. Um, Eurymachus, meantime, uh, start again. He's the uh, the second most uh, surly of the suitors. Uh, he starts taunting Odysseus as a lazy beggar. Um, Telemachus has had enough of this abuse of uh, a man who he knows is his father, so he sends the suitors home. And they're amazed, okay, just as they were amazed at the physique of uh, Odysseus. How can he have the boldness to, um, to dismiss us like this? And so they stand there stunned, okay. Well, that's where we'll pick it up in class in book P2.
Book 6, XIX, uh, Book 19. Thank you for uh, joining me for this. Uh, it, it, you've been a delight. I, I can't imagine a, uh, a better audience. Uh, thank you for being with me, and uh, uh, bless you all, and uh, we'll see you in class. Goodbye.